All right, so in the same way that if you had several resistors connected together, you could replace those resistors with a single resistor of a particular value and you would get the same current at the same voltage. Okay, so we would say that's an equivalent resistance. Likewise, we could figure out equivalent capacitance. Uh, now the parallel is probably the easiest one to sort of figure out why does it work this way. Um, if I have two parallel capacitors, then remembering that the capacitance of this one is based on its area, cross-sectional area of that plate. And if I have two of them in parallel, then the area of those cross-sectional areas is sort of going to be adding, aren't they? Okay? It's as if I've just made one big one. If I were to join them together that way, those plates together, well, this is a really, really big capacitor plate, yeah? Right? Well, it's effectively what I'm doing if I, if I have it this way and I connect this plate with a wire to this plate, I'm just making a really, really big plate. And so the two capacitance, C1 plus C2, would have an equivalent capacitance of C1 plus C2. Okay, so in parallel, you just add If you have more than one, well, if you have more than two, you just keep adding them all together. Okay, so when they're in parallel, you just keep adding them up. Okay, so it's 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 exactly the same formula as for resistors in series. Okay, so when you've got capacitors and resistors, when you're finding the equivalent, you just sort of flip what you're looking for. Okay, so it's a, in parallel. For capacitors, it's the same formula, just with capacitance, as series resistors. Okay? So what do you think it is when I have capacitors in series? What do you think I do? Riley, what do you reckon? Uh, same as resistors in parallel. That's right, it's the same as resistors yeah. in parallel. So if I have two capacitors, I'll just do it with two to begin with. Um, okay, so when I have uh, two capacitors in series, then in order to get the equivalent capacitance, I don't have to, I don't add the capacitors because they're not in parallel, so the plates aren't just sort of being next to each other, made being bigger. What we're get, having to do is find the, uh, the sum of the reciprocals, okay? And so you'll find this on your formula sheet. Basically what it means is Okay, that's another way of writing that. Okay, so basically it means the same thing. I prefer this way because, well, not just as it's smaller, but it's easier to put into your calculator. If you make sure you keep the brackets, that little button there, there's x to the minus 1 button that does this. So you've got x to the minus 1 on your calculator. So if you type in your value for C1, let's say it's 1 microfarad. And if you work in microfarads, and you'll get an answer in microfarads, so you can just, if I've got one microfarad, I can just do that. Actually, I'll, I'll do a couple of examples of that. One microfarad plus, let's say it's another microfarad, then I can just go one to the minus one plus one to the minus one, close the brackets, and then make sure you do the minus one again at the end, okay? That reciprocal thing there. So let's do a couple of example questions together. Uh, I won't bother with the ones in parallel because, oh, actually, I will. Parallel for different values. Okay, so let's do them in parallel first. So if I had a 1, 10 microfarad and a 680 nanofarad. So the trivial ones would be if it was 10 microfarads plus 6.8 microfarads. It'd just be 16.8 microfarads. Right? Trivial. I'm pretty sure we can all do maths like that. When there are um, different prefixes of our scale there, so we need to convert them into the same one. Okay? So 680 nanofarads, I'm going to convert to microfarads. 
six hundred eighty nanofarads is divided by a thousand. Zero point six eight. Well done, Matthew. Microfarads. Okay. And so now I can just add the two together. Is it in the same unit? So it's going to be ten point six eight microfarads. Okay. So make sure you convert it in from one into the other. I could have done microfarads in nanofarads. I could have said 10,000 nanofarads plus 680 nanofarads and I would have got 10,680 nanofarads as my answer. Both are correct because they are the same thing really. They're just different, different uh, scale of use. Okay? Uh, so they're pretty straightforward. All you need to do is remember to convert them to the same scale group one. In series you need to remember to do the same thing. Uh, so let's look at uh, 22 microfarads and let's do 10 microfarads in parallel, uh, in series rather. Okay, so when they're in series, I just go the CT, meaning the total capacitance. Now, because they're both in microfarads, I can just work in microfarads. I don't need to convert it to farads, then back to microfarads. It's just, uh, well, it just does the same thing. Uh, so I'm just going to work in microfarads here. Uh, so on these calculators, it is there. Okay, so what I tend to do with these is I do the bit in the brackets first, so I go 22 to minus 1 plus 10 to the minus 1, press equals, and I get some usually pretty small number. And then I just press the x minus 1 button again, okay? So I don't actually have to type anything else in, I just press the x minus 1 button again. there is my equivalent capacitance. Okay? So, um, I do the two inside first, pressing plus, uh, and then, then equals before I do it, and then I can do the second one. Or alternatively, I could have used the brackets and done it all in one go. Okay? And it would have, wouldn't have given me this answer in the intermediate, I would have had that straight out there. Okay? Um, when the values are different scale, so uh, let's say I've got 100 nanofarads and one microfarad. Okay. I need to convert either that into nanofarads or that into microfarads, one or the other. And it doesn't matter which I do, I'm going to convert that into microfarads. So it's, well, I should have actually write and in series here. They're not just plus together. Okay, so 100 nanofarads equals 0 0.1 microfarads. So 0 0.1. And I get. Okay, 0 0.091 microfarads or 91 nanofarads. If I converted that into nanofarads, so 100 and 1,000 nanofarads in series, it would have given me the same thing. Now, something you'll notice with this, and whenever you're doing, whenever you're doing resistance calculations in parallel or capacitance ca calculations in series, you will find that the answer is always smaller than the smallest capacitance or resistance. Okay? So 91 is a bit smaller than 100 nanofarads. Okay? If the um, two are vastly different, so one is like 100 nanofarads and 100 microfarads, it would only be marginally smaller than this one. Okay? Like it's the same idea with resistance. Okay? 